me. And, and it just, both of them I had run into, so I knew they were here. And I thought, you know, why aren't they on the list? And I swear, this is the truth. Uh, when I arrived today, somebody walked up to me and said, oh, by the way, they're here. And uh, so I couldn't be happier because I love them as men and they were incredibly uh, important to our film. Uh, one of them, you know, one of the greatest dancers still on the planet today uh, who played Swifty. Please say hello to Kevin Stay. And how many of you have seen the movie before? Well then, I'm not going to have to say much other than um, our beloved crutchy, Marty Velasco. Hey, hello, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, you fellas. Love it. <laughs> Marty just said, I've been crutchy for 20 years. <laughs> It is, it's 20, 20 years goes by, I mean, you, you start realizing the old theory of relativity, right? I and mean, 20 years just seems like the other day, right? So, Kenny, I'm wondering, when did you first hear about Newsies as a project? Jeffrey Katzenberg was the president of Disney at the time. He's now over at DreamWorks. A very successful and talented man and uh, called upon me to join him in what he said it was a venture to reinvent the musical for a new generation. And most of you might not know, but Newsies at first was a dramatic uh, uh, film. And, uh, and he said, why don't we turn this into sort of an American Oliver? And I love the idea. Oliver was a big favorite of mine growing up. I'd actually been in it as a boy. And, and I loved the Dead End Kids and everything that I, I read in the pages of Newsies as a dramatic piece. And so... Alan Menken and all these wonderful, you know, uh, other folks came along and we turned Newsies into a musical and the rest is now 20 years of history. And, uh, you know, music videos were very popular, obviously, but music videos are nothing compared to actually shooting a musical film, which is kind of an art that in, by 1992 had fallen by the wayside. So what was it like for all three of you to, to actually be... Here in Burbank, as I recall, right? It was it was here at the Warner Brothers lot. We, did a couple, we worked on a couple of lots. Universal, yeah. mm -hmm. big part at Universal and Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, and so what was it like to actually? Well, first of all, Kevin's been musical. in just about every video. I mean, from Michael Jackson to Madonna, every artist that has been, you know, at the top of their game has gone after this guy to be in their video. And I would say, talk a little bit about that. You know? Oh my gosh, uh, I've been in over fifty music videos. I love. <laughs> Hidden around somewhere in the back, <laughs> in the shadows. <laughs> Hardly. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, music videos are, are fast and furious. This was a, a treat because we got to actually workshop everything and work with stunt coordinators and work with vocal coaches and and actually get to dig into the characters and dig into the story and and create who we were going to be. Uh, music videos, you get you know a couple hours of rehearsal and then blam blam do the shot. And all they want to get is a hair flip and then you're out. <laughs> Uh, but this, we had time to play. And I've been in 51 music videos. <laughs> and, uh, I can, uh, at home. And, uh, <laughs> I've only been in two. <laughs> um, so it was, it, as a, it was a physical production as well. This is, this is uh, not a, a staid kind of uh, traditional Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. This is a super physical production. So was it a hard shoot from that standpoint? I actually broke my leg. Uh, as a, that's a joke. Guys. Um, yeah, originally he wasn't on crutches. His name was Smitty. It was jumpy. <laughs> what was it like to do choreography with the crutch? Well, it was hard because what what would happen was we had all the we had like two or three months of just rehearsal, dancing, singing, learning how to talk. Uh, the whole the whole deal, and so we would all learn the dance, and we'd spend a week or two learning, you know, one dance, just hours and hours every day, and everybody would be exhausted after learning the moves, and everyone would go and, and sit down and take a break, and they'd be like, all right, Marty, now we got to teach you the same dance, but now with a crutch. I'm like, well, I want to go play basketball. No, nope. we got to do it all again now, figuring out how to do it with a crutch. So. It was it was intense, but it was awesome. I loved it. It was intense, but we you know we invented it together. 
there were those things that you, you, that you could imagine from reading a script and, and those things that you could sort of draw out in a storyboard kind of fashion and those ideas that you developed with your cinematographer and, and, and the writers. But the heart of Newsies came out of the invention of all of us working together. You know, and I just kept my eyes open and my ears open, and so much of the heart of this movie really was born out of the hearts of these guys and, and all of the other guys that aren't with us here today. Uh, uh, it was an extraordinary workshop, the most creative set that you could imagine being on. They were wild, they were fun, and focused when they needed to be. And um, I, I think I remember reading about, uh, you had some famous visitors from the set, including uh, Gene Kelly, right? What was that like? Gene Kelly was my mentor. And and uh, I had met Gene uh, when I was doing choreography uh, for uh, uh, on a film called Xanadu. Oh. Come on, come on, come on! <laughs> you know you've and, all and seen Greg it Smith at three cast all of my dancers in Xanadu as well. But I met Gene Kelly while I was doing Xanadu, and really it was the best part of the experience. I walked away having a friend for the rest of our lives and uh, he really he became my mentor my teacher and invited me into his home and into his life and he shared all of his films with me and actually one day put the viewfinder that he used to make sing in the rain around my neck and took it upon himself to share with me his concepts of designing choreography for the camera so um, you know thank you Gene it, it, it is something that you um, notice in this film that you, you, you music video industry changed a lot of choreography for the camera, but you went back to some of the old traditions here of showing the dancing and showing the physicality of what these guys were doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think dance and choreography music can be storytelling. It's the reason why musicals, you know, were invented. And although I, I, I'm open to all kinds of um, ideas, for, for me, I like, I like to use choreography as a means of progressing the story you know, and, and helping the characters move to the next sort of event in, in the story, um, enriching the plot, deepening the whole emotional value of, of, of the film. And so cutting a lot, for me, just sort of can confuse the audience in, in, in terms of what it is that you're hoping the musical number will, will accomplish. So I tend to have that sort of old-style MGM, backyard musical, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, Busby Berkeley kind of approach um, to musical storytelling. I think one thing that I left, certainly, after having worked on this film with you, was bringing acting to movement and bringing movement to acting. And uh, there was a lot of rehearsal, a lot of, a lot of rehearsal to get these steps down and everything. And once we learned the steps, then there was a, a big focus on, now let go of all your technique, and now your kid's in the street doing this. And it was a, a big leap. But once we did it, it felt natural and real. And actually, I've used that for the rest of my, my work. For always, thank you. So, <laughs> help us through this because you guys all remember being uh, in in the film and in charge of the film and directing and creating the film. So, when we watch it today, tell us some of the secret things we should be looking for. The things that uh, you put in there as a director or that you guys remember happening that we might want to look for. Let's see, um, some of the things all the time throughout my life when, when I've you know, been introduced to new people, I've become friends with new people. Everybody always wants to watch Newsies with me. And so then I always end up like telling the same stories, but I'm trying to think now that I'm on the spot. Um, in the in the opening number, carrying the banner, uh, there's um, a scene where, or there's a little thing where I'm pumping water into uh, Matthew, uh, what was his name in the movie? Um, yeah, Matthew Schoenfeld. And he's sitting there scrubbing up, and I just remember the water was freezing, and he was dying, and he was like, I don't want to get in that tub. And I was like, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> he was miserable, and he had to sit there, you know, all scrubbing up. So I, do yeah, I would walk over to him, and I'd say, Matthew, we just had a little problem with the camera. We have to do this one more time, and his eyes would just, like, bulge out of his head. <laughs> um, Is there anything else you guys remember that we should be on the lookout for? How about that it was 110 oh. degrees? Who left their watch on? Arby! <laughs> Arby's watch. Keep an eye out for Arby's watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the world will know all those re you know, um, amazing gymnastic dance moves. It was at like 110, and they were dancing on, um, on pavement. And uh, it, it was just you know, miserably hot. 
uh, you know, so we're dealing, dealing with the elements of summer. And we, we shot a lot of the outdoor scenes at Universal, as you said, and so we, the New York Street was right next to the Back to the Future courtyard. So at that time, the super soaker water guns were really popular, and every, uh, so whenever we, you know, break uh, after a scene, we'd all grab our super, so super soaker water guns dressed in full-on newsy garb, run to the Back to the Future courtyard area, and just start spraying each other, you know, fanatically with these water guns while, like, the trams are going by. <laughs> and I was like, what, what is all that? And, uh, spray them and then spray each other. A few months before we were starting a, a, a principal photography, I got a telephone call at home um, here in the Valley um, that Universal backlot had burned to the ground. And that's when we were shooting Newsies. And, of course, you could imagine the panic. The whole back lot had burned down. All of New York was gone. And um, fortunately for, for us, Universal acted quickly, and uh, um, Steven Spielberg and I were both scheduled to do movies back there. They called us both to the table and said, okay, we're redesigning the back lot, and since you both have the first movies back there, uh, we'll let you give us some input. And so the whole um, uh, newspaper um, uh, you know, uh, set, the um, Pulitzer's, um, you know, the world, that was all built specifically for us that still exists on the back lot today. So there were many of the actual locations that we shot um, on at the Universal back lot still exist today and were built specifically for our film. Yeah, also, um, uh, yeah, I think Do the Right Thing was being shot while we were doing Newsies. Yeah, I think we were, we were sharing a lot with a few other amazing filmmakers, Spike Lee, Steven Spielberg. It was a good experience overall for you as a director. Oh, I'll never forget it. <laughs> was it a good experience for you guys?